What's up guys? We are Southwest Active Explorers and this week we're building a triangulated four link under the back end of our CJ7 rock crawling buggy. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, check out some of our other uh, off-roading, rock crawling, and build videos. This week, we got with Barnes four-wheel drive. We have uh, the Barnes four-wheel drive rear truss on, we got the pinion bridge on, and we wanted to build a four-link on the back end of our buggy. <clears throat> I uh, kind of tossed around if I wanted to just do upper triangulation or a double triangulated setup. We decided to go with a uh, upper triangulated setup and triangulate the lowers as much as we can, but we didn't want to build a cross member and bring the lowers all the way in. Uh, it would have gotten in the way of the drive shaft and a few other things, just didn't want to do it. Anyways, we're going to go over what we did to build this setup here, uh, show you how she flexes out, what it does, and what it takes to build one. So to get started, we took our upper mounts and we placed them to where they point basically directly where the uh, frame side mount is going to be. You know, try to get it all lined up as nice as possible so we don't put any unnecessary crazy angles on our heim joints. We ended up getting uh, between 40 and 44, somewhere around 42 uh, degrees of triangulation out of the uppers. Pretty darn happy with that. That's a decent amount. Uh, got those where we wanted them, tacked everything together. Uh, our lowers, uh, we, we put the mounts on the axle, it really only goes in one spot. Put them as far out as we could, uh, knowing that it's going to be a little bit wider than the frame. And that let us get about 10 degrees of triangulation out of our lowers. So combined, we have a pretty decent amount of triangulation. Uh, just like doing the front end, we took and we made some uh, PVC link arms to mock everything up with, just to make sure that things would work. And once we were fairly happy that things would work where we have them, we decided to go ahead, cut our DOM tubing. We really didn't want to make any mistakes. Uh, cut it, tack weld our uh, bung ends in the, P in the DOM tubing, put our hand joints in, and bolt it all together. Uh, we did have one, one slight issue that I didn't anticipate having, and I guess there's a few things we could have done differently, but we wouldn't have had as much triangulation. We have the upper link mounts all the way in, uh, all the way in close to each other at the center of the axle. And right in front of that, you see we have our pinion bridge. As the uh, axle cycles through its range of motion, the link arm was actually interfering with the pinion bridge. We could have taken and moved the link mounts out more, and that would have had the arm running uh, away from the pinion bridge and we wouldn't have had any problems. But I didn't really want to do that. I wanted as much triangulation as possible. So we decided the pinion bridge is super beefy. Why not cut some out of it? So that's exactly what we did. We basically just took and started marking where we were hitting, take the plasma cutter, cut a little chunk out of it, cycle it through, see where it's hitting, cut a little bit more, so we've essentially custom clearanced the pinion bridge to accommodate the upper links. I'm sure there's a couple other solutions that could have done the same thing. However, this was a quick, fast, and easy solution for us. Pretty happy with how all this turned out. All right, so what we're doing, we uh, measured our uppers to have the wheelbase that we want to have. And we know we want our lowers the same length as our uppers because we want the pinion to stay pointed at the transfer case. Uh, yeah, we're gonna notch the out of that pinion bridge. It's already hitting. Yeah. Yeah, we're really gonna have to notch it because, you know, I just thought of, I bet you if I pick up on this side, that's gonna get bad. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. We're gonna slap her back together and, uh, See if she flexes a little better now. And then match and do the same thing to the other side. Ugh. 
Okay, I see where it's hitting. That's getting better. So it might be hard to tell right now, but we got this thing flexed out about as much as we can with the way we got the Jeep set up on the jack stands and whatnot. But we got it notched out so that there's a decent bit of clearance for the control arm. Uh, this is really going to help us out. We weren't able to do this before. So we're going to clean this cut up, make it all nice and pretty. Uh, basically rinse and repeat, do the same thing to the other side. And hopefully the back end should be close to done at that point until we can start building our shock mounts. Anyways, we're going to get back at it. Long story short, the previous owner of this thing had built it into a buggy. Uh, he had a pretty nice set of mounts way up inside the frame on this thing. Unfortunately, uh, due to the transfer case I'm running and the way things fall, those mounts weren't going to do us any good. Uh, you just simply can't even get a bolt in it. So we had to go with some new mounts. Honestly, left the old ones on because I didn't feel like cutting them off. They're not hurting anything. So. Once again, got with Barnes four-wheel drive. They make some really awesome mounts. I uh, went through their website, picked out which ones I thought would work well. And I really like these mounts because they have the three different holes. So I can change my geometry just a little bit. I can affect my anti-squat numbers and kind of fine tune it in to some extent to how I want it. Uh, we ended up bringing the mount as far back on the frame as possible. That would allow us to have the most amount of triangulation as possible. And we ended up going with the same length uppers and lowers so that we can keep our pinion pointed at the transfer case. So once we had the uppers located where we need them and we knew the length of our upper arm, that allowed us to measure and cut our lower arm at the exact same length. And that dictated how far forward on the frame rail the lower mount gets put. So pretty nice. We got everything from Barnes, the DOM tubing, the Heim joints, the mounts, literally everything. I talked to their guys on the phone a couple times. Uh, they answered a bunch of my questions and were incredibly helpful. So this stuff was super easy to weld together and put up in here. We have some final welds to do. We've cycled everything through and now that we're pretty darn happy with how it moves, I'm ready to go through with the welder and do all the final welds so we can put the weight of the Jeep on the suspension. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the axle flexed out as much as our floor jack will let us. We have picked it up a little bit higher before, uh, and it does flex out a little bit more than this before we have to stop it out. Uh, I think it's gonna work pretty well. We're gonna have to figure out exactly where our bump stops need to go, but it should work fairly well for us. Only one way to find out though, and that's to take it out off-roading. Anyways, we're going to keep building our, uh, our CJ7 rock crawler here. If you want to follow along with our build and see some of our other off-roading and rock crawling footage, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And as always, guys, stay active and keep exploring.